emerging from what was once the sea. This land rose up as a gift of God, now called Kerala, the God's own country. Hear carefully what the rumble of the mighty ocean wants to say. Watch intently as every lashing wave here holds a fury within, for the wounds beneath are indeed deep and devastating. The roar, the rumble, indeed wise for millions of people who still await the silver lining that may change their lives one day, maybe. In search of self-respect, a pursuit that has seen umpteen number of generations of these fishermen communities, most of them converted Christians, live amidst the bounties and vagaries of nature. Living on the edge, these marginalized communities continue to take the wrath of deprivation and poverty. For in the God's own country, the menace of casteism has given these converted Christians a tainted identity of discrimination. For now, they are addressed as Dalit Christians, the people who belong to the trampled upon category of India's caste-ridden society. Alarmingly, today, the converted Christian Dalits, almost 90% of whom are Hindu converted Christians, constitute more than 60% of India's 25 million Christian population, with Catholics accounting for 15 million. Worth mentioning here, the derogatory epithet caste owes its origin to Portuguese missionaries who during 16th century used it to address the Hindu society. These divide lines from European Christian and imperialistic viewpoints were a slur on Hindu civilization and society for casteism was harnessed to serve their own vested interests. notwithstanding the mention of Varna, as mentioned by Sri Krishna in Sri Bhagavad Gita. The four Varnas, meaning castes, were created by him based of guna, meaning character, and karma, meaning duty. It was a social order meant to ensure stability and proper functioning of society. There was no mention of one caste being superior to another. Christianity too had the same belief, but for the reality. Being crushed in the duality, 15 million innocent converted Christians today wait in despair. For the churches world over, including those in India, claim to eschew the path of caste discrimination, blaming the Hindu societies as propagators of casteism, while the government expresses its inability to extending benefits to a community which is not expected to have castes. This means the Dalit Christians are being denied of their statutory benefits on the ground that Christianity caste discrimination does not occur within Christianity. But this is a misnomer. Christian communities do not accept low caste converted Christians with equality. They continue to suffer the same social and economic disabilities as their brethren, professing Hindu or other faiths. <laughs> हैं आज है तो खाना खाएंगे नहीं तो पानी पी के सोएंगे हैं ऐसे कब तक तो करेंगे तो चर्च इंस्टीट्यूशंस आप लोगों की वो वेलफेयर कुछ नहीं करते इन रिट्रोस्पेक्ट द सैपलिंग्स ऑफ क्रिश्चियनिटी इन इंडिया एनंसिएटेड सैंक्टिटी एंड ट्रांसपेरेंसी दैट द बाइबल इंटेंडेड the epoch-making history of Christianity in India dates back to 52 AD, a period that is reminiscent of many apostles and later missionaries who traveled all the way from Europe into India to disseminate the teaching of Jesus Christ and propagating Christianity. Saint Judas Thomas, a carpenter and a disciple of Jesus, was the first to come to India to build a temple just 20 years after the crucifixion of Christ. It was from Kudangulur or Kranganur, 
the gateway to the Asia's cradle of Christianity, that the father of Christianity in India, St. Thomas the Apostle, made his presence. Preaching gospel in many parts of India, he preached Christianity first among the Jews and then converted seven Brahmin families from whom the Syrian Christians trace their genealogy. The message of unification and equality was a major propagator among various castes and societies existent at that time. For the underlying salient thrust of his preaching was that baptized in the name of Christ are equal. He quoted Lord Jesus Christ from Bible. Come to me all that are weary and are carrying heavy burden, and I will give you rest. And as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer a Jew or a Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ. St. Thomas Christians of Kerala had blended well the ecclesiastical world of the East Syrian Church with the socio-cultural environment of their homeland. Thus, the East Syrian Church was Hindu in culture, Christian in religion, and Syro-Oriental in worship. Though constructed in 1953 constitutionally, the foundation stone of this church was laid by St. Thomas himself. St. Thomas, during his stay at Malabar, went along to expand his missionary work to China. He also founded seven churches at the following places. Malyankara, Palayu, Kotakawu, Kuelon, Naranon, Nalankal, and Chayal in South India. Roman Catholicism marked its entry with the arrival of Portuguese into Goa during the 15th century. Another name that reckons in the history of Christianity is St. Francis Xavier, who came into Goa in 1542 and was made the Archbishop in 1557. The Roman Catholicism restrained its missionary efforts to the upper caste Hindus only. Only until the end of 18th century, when Roman Catholicism and Protestant denominations came to terms to abolish discrimination on grounds of caste, a pattern which the main Protestant communities tried to follow. A time when the concept of agape meals or love feasts in which Christians of all castes were invited to eat meals together, cooked by members of lower castes, was initiated. Another trait that strongly emerged out of missionary activities besides spreading Christianity was performance of humanitarian deeds, giving the needy and deprived the basic necessities of life like food, clothes and shelter. A commendable presence of missionary activity was a countrywide network of churches, missionary schools, colleges, medical colleges, technical institutions, besides hospitals. In, in my, my opinion, Christian, Christian missionaries, missionaries have done, done good to us indirectly. The great educational and curative institutes of Christian missions, I also count among indirect results because they have been established not for their own sake, but as an aid to proselytizing. Education is the way by which people can really uh, live as human beings. Education in Christian schools stimulated reformist movement in Hinduism itself. Currently estimated, the number of institutions run by Christian missionaries in India touches a figure of almost 40,000. The Catholic Church alone runs 7,000 primary schools, 3,000 secondary schools, 150 colleges, 1,500 technical training institutes, two engineering colleges, two medical colleges, 1,700 hostels and boarding houses and 3,500 community centers. While the elite straighters of our society continue their educational pursuits through the missionary-run high-tech education schools and institutes, seeking the best of knowledge and vocational trainings, the converted Christians see no respite from their miseries. Instead of going to schools, millions of innocent kids and adolescents indulge in unskilled or semi-skilled vocations while some toil as laborers in brick cleans and other small-scale industries. Others rough it out in open agricultural fields, albeit the scorching heat or a chilling winter.
many of them pulling rickshaws and tongas. Shocking still, some of them still work as bonded laborers with the landlords, popularly addressed in Punjabi language as Athadi. Athadi? Athadi. Athadi. So, how much money is it? It's about 1,000 rupees. Living on the edge and remaining on the periphery of the community, the Dalit Christians dare not dream of coming up educationally and socially, for the church still discriminates them as low castes or outcasts. Or castes the school hold the center centre hold the ne, machine a dehari ne, or kambal vi dende ne, or kehe ladki di shadi hundi hai, unu pe hawi dende ne, ta sa apni clearance hai unu dende. Traya tha machine ka, wo bhi khud hi isne bhamno ka de diya the, hamko kuch nahi. Isai logon ko kuch nahi diya. I know uh, there are some chapters and there are some leaders even now. Even after many, I mean, 20 centuries, they are considering the Dalit Christians as a, as a, a second class citizens. That, that act, I mean, attitude of the church leaders is to be I mean, taken. This cult of discrimination today is spreading like a virus all over the country. This village, Pir Sain Dhariwal block, Gurdaspur district in Punjab, is a statement on the allegation. Called Tatti in local Punjabi dialect meaning untouchable colonies are seen located at bay from the vicinities of the elite areas. It is against faith, it is against the Bible and it is absolutely unchristian. If all are one in Christ, there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile and the barbarian. If we accept this, you know, any kind of discrimination on the basis of caste would certainly be unchristian, there is no doubt about it. In, in some places this still continues, which is a very unfortunate thing and it is most unchristian. Caste consciousness is still to be wiped out among Christians. There are still caste-based cemeteries in some places and high caste Christians are still reluctant to marry Dalit Christians. The church leaders, the upper caste Christians should treat the, um, the Dalit Christians at par with themselves. Even uh, uh, many of the upper caste uh, people, they will not give their, uh, have some kind of marriage arrangements with the, uh, with the Dalit Christians. So this parity should be removed. Which means, in practice, the Dalits remained Dalits, regardless of religion. <laughs> A Dalit is a Dalit whether he is a Hindu or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Christian. Even as members of various Christian communities, Christian Dalits suffer the same ancient segregation, oppression and unjust discrimination the same social, educational and economic disabilities. Only now, at the hands of their fellow Christians of the upper castes. Equality in our perception, in our behavior, does not mean equality in uh, economic uh, status. It doesn't mean equality in education or other areas. Let's hear what Father P.P. George has to comment on this. We have not made any difference in our institutions between Dalit Christians and other Christians. Dalit Christians form a sizable proportion of Christians in India. Although they comprise more than 60% of the Christian population, Dalit Christians account for only 3% of clergy, continuing to suffer from social, economic and educational infirmities. The Dalit Christians find it almost impossible to break the barriers of status-oriented jobs. Twelfth, I was in 1997 and I was trying to try it for 3 years. But I didn't do anything, I didn't ask any donations, I didn't say anything, I didn't do our care. Deprivation of basic education indeed has its bearing on employment and job placement opportunities. What does he have to do? हम तो जैसे के हैं वैसे ही हैं। जी। उसने अपना वकास जो है, अपना काम जो करना था, वो अपना काम कर ही जाते हैं। जी। 
हमारे लोगों का तो बच्चे जो है बच्चे भी स्कूल में नहीं लेते अच्छा जी कि आप काट पड़े हैं जी कंट्रास्टिंगली द एलीट टर्नआउट्स फ्रॉम द क्रिश्चियन मिशनरी रन एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस दैट इज चिल्ड्रन ऑफ हाई क्लास इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट पॉलिटिशियंस ब्यूरोक्रेट्स एंड सो ऑन आर नॉट ओनली प्रिविलेज्ड दे आल्सो आर द प्रेफर्ड वंस व्हेन इट कम्स टू प्रोफाइल जॉब्स बट दिस टॉर्च बेयरिंग विजन fails to dispel the darkness of ignorance for its own community ye apne na jehde set kar de schoolan ch hor hospital hunde ya te inna de vich badiyan yani ke naukri vaste hunde ya facility ya jehdiyan eh sanu ni dinde baharo lok aa ke itthe kam karde ya te apne taur de utte inna ohna nu rakhde ya te itho jehde punjab de local log ne ohna nu nahi rakhde today A large number of educated youth of the converted Christian community are undergoing the crisis of unemployment and poverty. Caught in the vicious web of seeking equality, the hopes of the converted Christians stand shredded to pieces. The church and missionaries, which enjoy a huge resource backup, both academic and fiscal, rather than coming to the succor of their own community members, today seek refuge from the government. to extend the reservation to the dalit christian communities they are slapping allegations on the government for not recognizing dalit christians at par with the dalits of other religions and restoring the legitimate right there is a limit to what the church can do you know the church has done its best uh, but there is a lot more that needs to be done and depriving the christians of dalit origin of what is their due has been a grave uh, injustice done to them because there are other uh, minorities which are given these facilities apart from hindu dalits the buddhists are given the sikhs are given only the christians have been deprived of this which i consider very unfair on the part of the government at the helm it is the cbci the catholic bishops conference of india that runs and controls educational and other institutions in the country these missionaries continue to receive crores and crores of rupees in the form of foreign aid for emancipation of the marginalized segments of the society according to the department of fcra ministry of home affairs during the year 1999-2000 24000 organizations received 3924.63 crore rupees of foreign grant more than 80% of which was for the christian ngos this is the figure of foreign aid which is on the official record of the government of india notwithstanding the flux of whopping amounts that flow in as income from almost 40000 educational and technical institutions across the country To top it all, the congregation donates a considerable amount after prayers. Besides the monthly donations, a church in a mediocre vicinity collects on an average 10,000 rupees a month, while the one in the affluent areas could amount anywhere between 1 lakh to 5 lakh rupees. With over 2.5 lakh churches in our country, the influx of money is quite high. Unfortunately, all goes unaccounted. resulting in paucity amidst plenty converted christians continue to rot in their hells the appeals to authorities have only remained in words declarations prayerful wishes and promises we are living in a competitive society you do not put a normal child with a disabled child in a race is it fair when the whole society has been oppressing them and has discriminated against them and uh, in a way made them lose their sense of dignity and now when they are demanding the government is not listening to them it is not at all helpful to talk about justice without implementing some concrete rules of distributive justice i mean i do not believe in this reservation as such personally okay. whether it is in the institutions or in uh, regarding the number of people presets and after all church and missionaries are a full fledged autonomous body with a considerable number of institutions properties financial and material resources 
powers and authority of secular nature for helping minorities. How come the Dalit Christians are being excluded and alienated? When a person Conversion into new faith has not redeemed them from their Dalitness. The stigma of untouchability. Dalit and untouchable, they have remained, even within the Christian communities. On 17th of August 1990, the Indian Church, in cooperation with World Council of Churches, WCC, took out a rally in New Delhi, demanding and pressing upon the government of India to give reservation to Dalit Christians at par with the Hindu, Sikh or Buddhist Dalits. The campaign for reservation, initiated by the church, is indeed illogical and baseless. Asking the government to restore scheduled caste quotas for converted Christians is virtually bogging down the sole hope of dignity and self-respect amongst the converted Christians. इसका समर्थन हम बिल्कुल नहीं करते कि एससी एसटी में फिर से हम आए क्यों भी फिर हमारा क्रिश्चियनिटी में आना ही बेकार है फिर तो फिर वापस हो जाए इससे तो हम जहां थे जो ईसाई अब बदल कर के आए अपने आप को यहां पर ईसाईत में आए हैं या एससी एसटी या दबे कुचले लोगों से के परिवार से आए हैं क्रिश्चियनिटी में अगर वो इस मांग को करें तो हम इसके समर्थन टुडे the Christian missionaries are not inclined to give reservation within their own institutions, nor are they willing to comment on the database that conforms the number of converted Christian beneficiaries within their institutions, for the figure is abominably low. It would be difficult for us to say the exact percentage of Dalit Christians being educated. And those who have managed to get their education in government schools and colleges see no respite in being counseled and guided by the churches for the lack of an efficient mechanism of data assimilation. I'm a staff nurse, but there's no service. The mission doesn't give any service. I just have this problem. My family, my child is small. There seems to be an innate awareness amidst the caste Christians, who are often more active in oppressing Dalit Christians and resisting vigorously when they demand dignity, equality and justice. Unfortunately, the minority class Christians share a bigger piece of cake, while the majority of Dalit Christians remain under the stranglehold. Church ko reservation ki rat chhod kar dharmantrit isaniyon ke samajik, aathik aur rajnitik vikas ke liye ek model tayar karna chahiye. Poor Christian Liberation Movement (PCLM) is the only organization that is cohesively organizing converted Christians throughout the nation with the objective of uniting voices that may reach the church authorities. A just and fair demand for self-respect and dignity in the community and within the church setup. इस समय 16 राज्यों के अंदर ये संगठन काम कर रहा है। PCLM organizes seminars, conferences, पदयात्रास, धरनास, demonstrations, public meetings to unite and organize converted Christians in different parts of the country. Chief representatives of the organization visit various parts of the country to awaken the converted Christians from their slumber of ignorance and motivate them to fight for their right in the church setup. Valid interactions, counseling sessions give a boost to the morales of the converted Christians, thus attaining a unique prowess of problem solving. PCLM is leaving no stone unturned to prioritize the cause of 15 million converted Christians, harnessing all the vehicles of communications, that is, international and national press media from time to time. PCLM continues to knock the doors of CBCI and other missionary authorities, shaking them to realize their onus towards the converted Christians. CBCI is not almighty. Certainly, uh, when you think of what the government can do, what CBCI can do in terms of development and uplift, it's very little. We are a drop in the ocean. Let the government give us the schools. We'll educate all these people. Let the government finance all these people without any problem. 
why is the government afraid to do this why aren't they aren't they to be given equal opportunity they are dumping it on the church the full responsibility when they know that our resources are limited in the code of christianity there exists no scourge like caste discrimination how do they expect the government to identify dalits in a community which projects itself as an icon of equality one fully agrees with the government's point of view सरकार इस मामले में इन बंधुओं के लिए बहुत कुछ करने की स्थिति नहीं है में नहीं है जो कुछ करना है वो क्रिश्चियन समाज को स्वयं करना है वेदर द एपिक्स हिरार्की डिसाइड्स टू फेवर द कॉज ऑफ द कन्वर्टेड क्रिश्चियंस और नॉट रिमेंस टू बी सीन कैन द गवर्नमेंट इंपोज अ मैंडेटरी कोड ऑन द क्रिश्चियन मिशनरीज टू इंश्योर एन एडिक्वेट लेवल ऑफ सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक स्टैंडिंग फॉर द दलित क्रिश्चियंस इज अ क्वेश्चन दैट रिमेंस टू बी आंसर्ड the abundance of equality is the essence of it all casteism remains a scourge that has left deep seated wounds on the face of our society and the feeling of dalit christian indeed sums it all we do understand that vocation is from god but it boggles our mind why he should choose his priests from non dalits only is god too casteist does he also practice untouchability in search of self respect one day maybe